Hey everyone, this is a fairly simple job. We're going to show you how step by step to get through. We have here a Compaq CQ60 laptop computer, it's a Windows 7 based machine. Uh, what we have is a problem with the hard drive, and we know this when we turn it on. I also went into the BIOS earlier, diagnosed it. The uh, computer would not recognize the hard drive um, at all. The recovery partition is gone. It is, it is history. If we look here, let me see if I can zoom in on it. Bear with me. I'm not sure if this will come out here. But what it's telling us, if I can get it to focus, is no bootable device. Insert boot disk and press any key. And sorry about my focus, but that's where it is. No bootable device. So, <clears throat> generally, hard drive gone. It won't go anywhere from there. And again, the BIOS doesn't recognize any functional hard drive in the unit itself. So, what we're going to do is remove the hard drive. Uh, once I've done that, I'm going ahead and run the uh, recovery disks on it, which we ordered for the customer and uh, he'll have a brand new computer pretty much um, once the updates are done. Uh, updates are what probably takes the longest. Um, I can invest probably a good solid day in doing all the Windows 7 updates for what we have. So, we'll uh, come back out of here. I'll cut away for a second and uh, set the camera up and we'll continue on. Alright, so here we have the machine turned off closed up. What we're going to do is flip it around. And right under here, now I'm going to try to get, well after we remove the battery, of course, make sure there's no power. You don't want to short anything. Battery's out, unit is unplugged, no strings attached, no power on the battery. What we're going to do, I'm going to see if I can get a close shot on this. It's usually fairly simple where the hard drive lives. Again, if I can get it to focus, maybe find my finger. Nope. A little too close. So I'll back out just a touch. All right, under this door on this computer, there are little icons by these screws, and they look like little platters of a disk, and that's exactly what they are. This is your hard drive access door, and these two screws give you access. So I'm going to try to get full frame here. Back out just a touch. <clears throat> and to gain access to that, we're going to remove these two screws. So we'll start with the one closest to me. The screw will not come out. You'll hear it click when the threads are no longer engaged on this one. There is a little capture device that holds that screw in there so we don't lose it. So we do appreciate that. Thank you, HP. And on this, they're different on a lot of different computers, but on this particular compact. Now, I have had this hard drive out already. I've done the work, but I wanted to demonstrate how it's done for those of you that have never done it and wanted to try it for yourselves. So, okay, crawling up the leg. <clears throat> so, there are a couple little clips on the side here. You want to be careful and release those, and then pull it forward. This particular door again has just these little snap clips they'll pull right out and then there's little tongues here that slide underneath this and we put it together I'll show you how to do that again um, so pretty simple to get these off other ones are can can be a little trickier <clears throat> so um, upon opening this one of the first things that I noticed is there does seem to be a little corrosion and staining around in here so it looks like this machine at some time did take a little bit of water damage. So there's also a little bit 
the certificate of authenticity is is gone. I can't read. It's not really gone, but I can't read anything on it, which leads me to believe that it's very well possible, and we'll see more evidence of that later of water damage on this machine. Um, <clears throat> I did want to make sure that everything ran fine, so I took another hard drive of mine that I had, a uh, version of Linux on, and ran it on there, and everything seemed to be working fine. The screen, the wireless, everything was running beautifully. So. Um, I'm confident that when we replace the, when I was going to replace the hard drive in this, that we would end up with a fully functional, happy computer. So what I'm going to do now is the hard drive itself is enclosed in this bracket. What we want to do is remove this bracket. And to do so, there are three screws. In some there are four, some there are two, some there are one. This one, this particular one has three. Now you can see how this little tongue here has room to slide and there's a gap here and here, which leads me to believe that when I remove the screws, the way to properly remove this is to slide it over. Some machines, you lift this, pull this tab, comes straight up, others slide straight over. If you inspect this pretty closely, you should be able to figure out which direction it goes. So what we're going to do is going to remove three screws. This one here, and this one that holds the front where the connector is and this one back here which just stabilizes it and locks it into place. So we'll start here, remove this screw. Do uh, Be careful not to drop them. It can be sometimes difficult to get if there's a little crevice in there that they fall into. Remove it when it's just about out. I grab it and off it goes. Off to the side. Don't lose your screws. <clears throat> Okay, we've released the three screws. What we're going to do now is take the tab, pull back. That's going to disconnect the SATA connectors on the side of the hard drive, which are right here. And I can remove the drive very easily. So now this hard drive, if we compare it to a new drive, what we're going to notice is it's not same there's tabs and stuff well this is a little bracket that holds that hard drive in here so what we'll need to do is remove that bracket to do so if we look on the side we'll see four screws two on this side two on this side so we'll remove those and transfer the bracket to the new drive so let me move this out of the way momentarily <coughs> and <coughs> we'll remove these screws Sorry about getting my hands in the way. Try not to do that, but sometimes it is inevitable. Remove, flip it over, take the other two screws out. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to lay it flat on the ground <clears throat> on my mat here. And I'm going to lift this, center it. I'm going to lift this off the existing hard drive. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this in the, in the video here, but I'm seeing more signs of water damage in around this drive here. In a number of different places, I see some corrosion. I think you can pick it up. You can clearly see it there, the corrosion on that drive. So, yes, this machine has taken a little bit of water damage, but, again, everything else seems to be functional. It's dry on the inside, so it's been sitting long enough to where I'm not too concerned about anything else failing. So what we'll do is we'll have that drive just the way we took it out. We're going to take the new hard drive. We're going to orient it in the same position so we make sure that we install our bracket properly. Take our bracket again in the same position, slide it right over, and our screw holes line right up. <clears throat> now. If you were to install it incorrectly or you get carried around or distracted by kitten crawling up your leg, then and it, you don't, if you forget how it's oriented, just remember how it slides back in so you can look back in the chassis here where the connections are. And if it's upside down, if it's wrong, the screw holes will not line up. So, <clears throat> more water damage corrosion inside here. So we'll make sure that we put it in correctly. So our screw holes line up just like that. You can see them there. And we're going to replace these four screws to 
secure it in our little uh, hard drive bracket here. It's a cool day today here in Michigan. I am glad I'm wearing blue jeans because again, the newest addition of our family is finding it irresistible to crawl up my leg and maybe you want to be a part of this video. <clears throat> So don't over tighten these, just get them in there, get them snug, and there you have it. This is a 250 gig hard drive, there are others you can get larger if it's a good time to upgrade for you and you're running out of space and you have more pictures, you can certainly do that. Now, fortunately for this hard drive, there was nothing on it that was critical. I will try to do a recovery, but this drive here won't even spin up. So I suspect that my efforts will be in vain and it will be unrecoverable. Uh, 250 gig hard drive as is the drive that I'm replacing, 250 gig. <clears throat> so I do recommend, and I'll say this, this is kind of a, a talking point that I like to cover with all of my customers, make, make sure that you're backing up everything. Cloud storage is cheap now. You can also get portable hard drives fairly inexpensively. and. Um, and make sure you have backup copies of all your important files, documents, and, and the like. So here we have the computer back again. I'm going to see if I can come in just a hair. And we're going to take the drive. Just as it came out, same orientation. See that tab right there? And we're going to drop it carefully in place. And none of the holes line up yet, but all we have to do is pull it forward until those screw holes, those three screw holes line up here, here, and here. And we'll take our screws and we'll set them back in place. <clears throat> all three of them. If you're organized and have a clean workspace, you shan't, this is a, again a fairly simple job not a whole lot of screws you need to worry about really just the the three bracket screws and the four that hold in the hard drive <clears throat> but more complex jobs you want to make sure that you have a clean surface um, you don't have anything really interrupting you like I do currently and um, you don't you make sure you keep your screws in order and you don't miss again don't misplace them all right, just a moment, make an adjustment, cat on the floor. <clears throat> Here's the tray, cover. Again, we're looking at the two tabs here that need to slide under here. So what I'll do is I'll start over this way a little bit, slide it in. The ones on the sides just snap into place. And I'm gonna turn these two screws back in, snapping those in place as they begin to draw down making sure everything fits as it should. I want to get this computer back to the customer in perfect condition. And zooming back out a little bit here, get that full screen. <clears throat> and now just replacing the battery. Contacts here slide into the contacts on this side. Difficult to see, I know, but simple. If you, you should be able to replace a battery. We'll snap it back in place. And there, old hard drive removed, new hard drive living happily in its new home. We're going to flip this over again. I'm going to change my camera position and we'll, uh, we'll fire it up and you'll see that it's back to working beautifully again. All right, here we go. Back at it. I'm going to lift the lid of the computer. Batteries in there is charged. I made sure it was charged before we started. Power on the machine back up, and I'll probably speed this part of the video up just a little bit so you don't have to watch the whole boot sequence. The bio splash screen, <clears throat> and Windows is loading. Now, you do have a couple options. If you don't have the recovery disks or have it, didn't make the recovery disk when you bought the machine, um, well, if you're watching this video, it's probably too late. Um, but make sure that when you buy a new computer, you do. Um, heed the messages and the prompts and you make your recovery disks 
and um, you're prepared for such an emergency and, and do proper backups when you need to. If you don't have the recovery discs, most manufacturers offer those for a price. I think I paid $12 or $13 for the discs for the customer on this. Don't quote me on that. I've got my thing somewhere else. Uh, maybe a little bit more with shipping. So, um, or the third option, or you can purchase, just a moment, let me lock in here. You can purchase a new copy of Windows and load it from scratch, either uh, while well, you would be doing it in Windows 8 on this machine. It came originally with 7. Um, or, for free, <clears throat> you can download many one of the many versions, or what they call distributions, of Linux. And there are versions of Linux that are very much like Windows. Um, feel free to shoot me questions and comments if you have any questions on that, or visit my website at trdata.com. Um, again, link <clears throat> watch watch the end of the video, there'll be a, a link to that. Um, Linux is free open source software, you don't have to pay for it. You download well, what's called an ISO, which is a disk image file, and you create a disk from it, you can have a friend do that, and um, load it onto your computer, put it in your um, DVD drive, and restart the machine, otherwise if you have the recovery disk, do the same thing, disk number one in the DVD drive, restart the machine, and just follow the prompts. It takes a little while, and again, this still has the factory Norton on it, as it did when it was brand new. I don't know if you can read that there, but Norton 2010. Uh, we're going to close that and not worry about it. I will do uh, the uninstall and clean it up, get rid of some of the erroneous stuff that's loading for the customer here. I tend to go a few... Uh, a few extra steps and make sure the machine is better than it was when it was new. So that concludes this. Again, a fairly straightforward job. Um, if you're in the area um, in western Michigan here, I'm happy to do it for you um, or happy to guide you through it if you need that as well. So um, good luck. Have fun. Uh, be careful. Um, if you cause any damage to the computer, if it's still under warranty, um, you'll avoid the warranty. Um, generally, though, if you're watching this video, your warranty is over. You're dealing with an older machine that the hard drive has just failed on or taken some damage. Um, so a warranty isn't, isn't an issue. But please uh, be cautious and do this job at your own risk. And, but it's, again, there's not a whole, usually a whole lot of risk to it. It's a pretty str simple, straightforward job. Uh, one thing I want to touch on as well, what I've done for this and what I generally do for clients because uh, security, I'll set up an administrator account with a password, something generally very simple, and then set user accounts up and encourage the customer to use those user accounts. That way if something were to come into the computer, a virus or something, it, Windows will automatically prompt for administrator password if any changes are made to the system. Not 100% foolproof but certainly is a, another a level of security, another step that you can take to help secure your system. Do not use the administrator account, just use your user accounts. So again, that concludes this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave the, in the comments below. Um, TechnologyRR.com on Facebook. Uh, it's Facebook.com, TechnologyRR, uh, or TR.com. Feel free to leave me messages on either of those two sites or in the comments below. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. Happy computing.